All right. Hello, everyone. How are you? Uh, first of all, uh, thank you very much to all participants that joining my session. Uh, it's been an honor that I can be a part of this uh, lesson and give some talk. Uh, before I begin my class uh, discussion about the topic that we've been discussed for today, I would like to uh, offer my gratitude to HELP University, who was my former, um, there are a few former students and, and colleagues there that I keep in touch until now. Uh, okay, without further ado, so I'll, I'll begin my slides over here. Okay, just, let me just go in into my slides. Okay. There you go. All right, as for today, we talk about why visuals matter. All right, so I would like to begin with this famous quote from Albert Einstein. He mentioned that one picture is worth a thousand words. So why a picture, a single picture is really worth a thousand words? So as we know that one single picture or anything that you see on your eyes is really eye capturing, you know, so you can easily translate into your mind and digest whatever that you've seen. Okay. So there's a little secret on that. Okay. If you keep saying a lot of things, uh, people will not much remember what you're saying. Sometimes it can be misinterpreted or miscommunication happen. So that's why it says that words alone aren't, the best way to communicate, yeah? Because sometimes even choosing the wrong words can be misinterpreted as well. So in fact, there are kind of research that show us many cases is downright in inefficient, yeah? As you can see on my slide here, okay, almost 50% of our brains are involved in visual processing. So therefore, when you use a, a visual image, so it's getting stronger people to easily recognize and remember because that's how our brain process, yeah? In other words, okay, as another example, people following direction with illustrations do 323%, even better than those who are following text direction alone. So that's why um, when you have a sign language or, you know, a sign board, so it getting you a better, you know, direction where you want to go in the next, uh, 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 what we call it, uh, uh, destination, yeah? And down there, okay, people only remember 10% of what they even hear after three days, okay? So sometimes we keep forgetting, for example, it's just like remembering uh, your friend's phone number. So after three days, if you are not saving your, uh, in, inside your uh, phone, uh, mobile phone, so you might be forgotten after three days. But if you use an image to remember about same person, the character that you want to save inside your phone number, it will be goes up, up to 65%. All right. So uh, let me keep to the next page. Okay. Well, this is just a reenactment. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, there's nothing personal here, but yeah, I just want to share the fun facts about uh, why the visuals matter. Okay, so there's a few reasons here why we need to use visuals uh, frequently, yeah? Because according to these uh, uh, images that I share with you here, so it says that visuals are permanent, yeah? So you keep remember whatever that you have seen on your eyes, yeah? Spoken words could be disappear, okay? After a few days later, all right? And then you have a visuals that allow time for language processing, yeah? Because sometimes when we talk uh, slightly with different language, uh, when we hear a few different language, it might take a few minutes or take longer for our brain to process. But when we use visual, no matter how, what kind of language that we use, it will interpret and easily, you know? And our brain will be goes to rememorize whatever that we've seen. So that's the reason why. And then uh, we do have um, visuals uh, to prepare students for transition. So this is where, actually it's good for not just only for high education students, but it also begin with 
uh, primary school or you know at the kindergarten level because it seems that our kids is easily recognize things when we have a visual or physical thing that they can easily to remember with okay so that's how it works and then uh, yeah visual also could help to build independence yeah so when you do certain things okay either physically or non physically so the visual could help is uh, help yourself to organize you know uh, your daily routine you how you you're going to do a lot of things in a single day so it's easily for you to uh, do your own routine okay and then uh, user, a visual also transferable between environment and people yeah that's true because when you go to certain places okay or different environment you easily can be recognized okay for example nowadays a lot of people especially teenagers love to take pictures selfies whatsoever so it will create a different moment you know that easily to be remembered rather than just type it down why you where, where you have been through or where is the best location for vacation through a text so i think using images is more uh, dominant yeah and then visuals have no attitude okay means that there's no tone frustration or disapproval so whatever that you see is whatever you get yeah so but you need at the same time you need to be careful when you use a, a, a selective visual that could be misinterpreted as well so i'll talk about that later on yeah and visual help to reduce anxiety yeah so this is how actually you can use visual to express something to your friends or your family or people around you Okay, uh, next is about uh, just an example how actually a picture adds, okay, using visual cues to market your business. This, so I try to more use this, uh, more emphasize it as a market your business. Uh, I would like to highlight a few things uh, that I like most about uh, how you use uh, right visuals for marketing. As you Maybe some of you have noticed at uh, Domino's Pizza, the way how they market their uh, products. So they always try to relate their products with the current issues. For example, a few days ago when PlayStation 5 uh, has been launched, so they try to relate with that element into their uh, advertising campaign material. So they still using this visual, it can be a part of humor, you know, basic appeal to humanity. So I think that could be interesting point for you to digest, yeah. All right, and then uh, when we talk about visual advertising techniques and examples, yeah, of course, you use images. Okay, a still images can help, but uh, it would be good if you use images for aesthetic uh, advertising, usually a, like a billboards, you know. So for example, to steal intention like in a uh, if you go to the highway so you have a big billboard a static image to cook, capture attention to the drivers and passenger who use the, the roads frequently you know so that could be easier for you to consume okay and as for videos okay uh, nowadays there's a lot of um uh, people using videos to promote their products yeah because compared to a static image or image uh, static image and videos so videos can capture more attention because it have a strong motion yeah because it can, it can be scroll you know uh, to convey more in depth information about about the video the product they want to sell yeah so i'm not sure if i have time to play a few videos here but i think you get what i mean all right okay and then if it goes to uh sorry uh there's something wrong here okay okay if it, it goes to uh, to build a brand uh, recognition okay this is one of the example coca-cola yeah so when we seen this logo okay definitely we remember coca-cola you know even if you use different uh, spelling of Coca-Cola, but you use, use the same 
type font or uh, you know the the typeface that we use for Coca Cola is easily remembered as Coca Cola. So I think that's how it it, it goes for when we come with the brand recognition. It's very important if you have can create a something unique uh, typeface or font for your branding or to market your products. Okay, and this is one of the example uh, visual advertising always been crucial, okay, to be a success for your business for now, you know. Uh, exception with radio advertising because radio advertising using uh, different methods to catch attention uh, to the audience, okay, but when you have a, a highly visual nature, no matter what the market is, so I think it would be easy to uh, obtain attention to the publics, yeah. So that's why nowadays uh, a lot of platforms uh, like Instagram and YouTube, Pinterest, Facebook, Twitter, also ever. So they only they actually now cater for advertising as well. So that's why you have Facebook ads, uh, so on and so forth. So I think uh, as for teenagers who want to be entrepreneurial uh, in future. They can simply integrate and use all these platforms for free, and some will be paid, you know, but it's easy to reach to the audience. So uh, you should take advantage of this, yeah. Um, I think, and some, for example, like, I love uh, uh, when public or netizen using uh, uh, memes, yeah, on Facebook because it always catch the attention to the public, you know, although it's making fun or humor element, but it's still. Uh, it reminds, uh, it, it generate to our brain to remember about the memes, yeah. Uh, so there's a uh, one uh, few examples that uh, I think it benefit you. Okay. All right, and then uh, as for uh, visual learning, what are the benefits? Yeah, of course, when you use uh, visual, okay your ideas can easily be seen by people, okay? So whatever that you create or you design your idea through visual, okay? So it can be seen by the audience. So that's a good thing about it. And it will easily to connect the thoughts. What are the interpret you want to tell to the audience, tell to your customer. So uh, using visual is very good. And it also can be a record as lesson as well, okay? For now, like nowadays, since the COVID-19 has uh, spread in Malaysia, so we use a lot of online classes just like this platform. So it would be good if we have a uh, two-way communication by video calls, you know, so this is how it works to record lesson. And if you notice in uh, Facebook as well, there's a lot of people start selling their products to uh, uh, Facebook by having a live Facebook live uh, initiative. So, Again, yeah, using a uh, using a visual is good, you know, not just only for to record lesson, and also it also engage uh, learning, yeah. So for student using, I know it might be a uh, slightly awkward for the first time using uh, this platform to do online classes, but like our prime minister said, this is a new norm, so. By who or by crew, we still need to learn this. So I think this is a good start for us to the next dimension of uh, learning classes uh, through the online platform. Yeah. And beside from that, okay, it should it also give a the feel, okay, uh, the story. What, for example, like uh, some of the TV commercial like Pet Petronas, for example, okay, they try to emphasize visual to play with the expression and emotions apply to get make sure the story can be filled by the audience what the, the message behind or the moral uh, behind of the story and it also easily to transfer the idea what we want and what they uh, what they learn from that yeah all right next thing is uh, image can be convey complex concept or relationship okay um Sometimes some people believe that um, mind mapping is a great way to generate the ideas. Okay, but so that's why we use the brainstorming session by using a mind map about 
some uh, something for example when you come up with a good film you know how to create a good film we do know where you want to start where the right direction to start to begin with so my map is very powerful uh, tools you know uh, because uh, it also generate ideas through the image because we need to write down and you know maybe some some sketches that could be easily to be remembered and it also remove the language barrier so i think that would be a good start for not just only um, to make a film but also in all all other areas especially when it come to the business yeah because most of the company now uh, they try to uh, get through to all channels not just relying on the traditional or competitor uh, advertising campaign so using the this digital platform with a good visual also help them to boost their markets yeah all right i think i'm not sure either i'm too fast or uh, too quick with this uh, lesson because uh, you know uh, here at rtm we always 24 hours uh, operation and i'm here on standby actually because later at 2 o'clock I need to prepare for the news. So I think without further ado, I open a uh, discussion with all the participants here. So that's, uh, I think it should be, uh, okay, I open the Q&A session for now, unless if you have anything to ask, or you can just simply type your question or on the meeting, uh, meeting here. Yes, thank you so much, Saifu, for that talk. It was very, very insightful. Some advices that we can understand and also follow later on. Right, yep. so yes, the floor is open up for questions. But while we wait for the questions to come in, Saifu, is there any last mm -hmm. words or any opinions that you think are, are changing about how visuals work in these modern days? Yeah. Um, okay, As I just want to relate my... Uh, the current situation how when I start working at RT now and visual is very important you know um, because we are not uh, focusing on advertising here but the content itself because good content but you do know how to deliver visually it doesn't get impact to the audience so I in, in such a way everybody should know and understand what kind of visual that caters to the audience so I think research about the audience uh, for example if you have some uh, actually cater for children for example when you do animation for example so you need to understand what kind of visual that's suitable for that kind of a uh, group of uh, people you know for example like kids in animation they actually we don't we are not allowed to show bloods you know so for example if you show bloods for kids they easily can be horrifying for them you know they easily can translate and uh, easily remember that scene. So that's why you need to be careful what type of visual that you want to show to do. Yes, yes. It's really important to understand your audience, isn't it, when, when creating this, these visuals for yes. your people. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Mm. Do you have anything else to say? Yeah, I think that's why so I'm open for any conversation with uh, the panels or participants here. I, I noticed there seemed like quite a lot of people here following this, yeah, yeah, this yeah. lesson, so I'm, I'm very surprised. <laughs> right, yes. So again, if you would like to ask any questions regarding what visuals are like, then you can ask the questions in the chat box. Yes. Yeah, anyone? Or you can use microphone uh, if you don't mind, so I can I can talk, I can communicate as well. Yes, if anyone would like to ask their questions directly, you can also turn on your microphone and talk to Saifu directly. Hey, I noticed some of my students are here. <laughs> It would be like um, uh, a different way of a reunion here. I cannot meet them personally in front <laughs> due to COVID-19. <laughs> yep, anyone? Saifu, I'd like to ask actually. Okay, yeah, so sure, how, go ahead. 
you know how um, a lot in the olden days, advertisement seems to be very, you know, right now it's offensive to us, but to those days it was sort of, it was accepted, it was, it is, whether it's about, you know, gender things or racial things. You know, why, mm-hmm. do you think, why do you think advertisements like those are more accepted? And how do you think the attitude towards advertisements changed from before, well, visuals, I mean, how did it change from before and how has it changed now? Yeah, um, I believe, I guess that uh, people start growing up, they have to keep fast with the technologies. For example, like old generation now, for example, I, I noticed some of my, my neighbors, they are teachers, you know, so when the COVID-19, they cannot go for work and teach the students. So by who? They still need to use technologies like this, you know. So they have to use the visual uh, to communicate with their students. So I think, uh, yeah, because of this uh, transition between post-COVID, uh, mm-hmm. could actually help the older generation to understand what how the generation or youngsters or youth communicate their idea through. So I think. Now some of them are, uh, start to copy how the way we communicate nowadays. Uh, so I think should not be an issue as long as they've been exposed to this type of technologies. You know, I think that's how now in Malaysia. Yeah, it's sort of like they have to find this balance between being in the the same mindset as the community, as their as their audience, but at the same time being creative and having something new. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. That's true. Okay, I think that I saw, uh, I see the question here. Yeah. One, so let me answer that. Uh, okay, what would you describe as a bad visual, even if it doesn't follow? Okay, it doesn't follow principle result time by equipment rating or on the regard as bad visual. Okay, uh, it depends on. For me, it depends on the context or what are kind of direction that you want to emphasize. To focus uh, to the audience, yeah. Uh, bad visual, for example, like I mentioned earlier, if you're using blood for children program in animation, so it's considered bad. Uh, uh, although the storyline, you must use blood, for example, to interpret that that character is dying, for example. But since the target audience doesn't ready yet that kind of approach, so you need to be careful. Uh, with that, you know, uh, unless, uh, for example, in uh, in advertising as well. So if you use a bad visual, sometimes it can be misinterpreted as well. Because I noticed some of the bad advertisement like A Asia last time, uh, not A Asia. Uh, I think it's fireflies. Okay, they're using uh, uh, stewardess uh, body gesture to promote their product. As it give a different meaning. You know, it just like to promote. Uh, sexual appeal kind of uh, representation of the company, you know, to promote the the, the campaign for their, their their brand. So I think that could be another example that you should try to avoid that unless if you know the certain audience that you cater for. Uh, yeah, but still, sometimes principle of design can be a good guidance. Uh, for you to start with to create a good design, a good visuals. Uh, but again, it's not a must. Uh, for me, if you have to follow a uh, principle of design, uh, sometimes you might be limit your creativity. Sometimes you need to break the norm. Uh, you have to follow what you feel good. But of course, you need to get some feedback to your audience for before you want to make sure it's officially released to public. Yeah, that's how it works for me. All right. I think I hope I answered that. Uh, uh, I answered that question. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I I do agree, and I do remember that advertisement where that um company used that body appeal to, for the stewardess, even though it's not really related to that kind yeah. of. Yeah. But at the same time, I realized that a uh, visual like that creates a lot of attention. It attracts a lot of people, even though it may not be a positive reaction. But it attracted a lot of attention. And what do you think about companies that use these controversial visuals to get uh-huh. attention, even though it may be negative? Yeah. Okay. Okay. The 
that's a good point that you highlight just now. Um, I, I'm not understand. Maybe, uh, maybe some companies are preferred to get well known by using this method. You know, because for them, like, like Malaysian cities always criticize. You know, or in Malay we call it kecam. You know. Yeah, yeah. We we love the that kind of approval because when you kecam or when you criticize that people, it give more branding, more highlight towards to that kind of kind of company. So that's uh, what been approved. Uh, that method has been used by Domino's uh, Pizza because last time <coughs> when Domino's Pizza have a certain, they love to to play around with the the current issue. For example, like last time I remember when there's a there was an incident uh, about the rider when the rider hit the car using his helmet you know mm-hmm. and then they try to portray that in their advertisement by saying that oh our uh, dominos pizza rider never used that kind of method we actually offer pizza you know that kind of thing so yeah yeah getting offended by that but if they think that is how actually to do with market their product then why not because nation people always have from mentality when you start slamming certain people on uh, on certain issues they're getting famous by that <laughs> hmm, yes yes i do agree and of course that saying goes on in the uh, media industry bad publicity is still publicity isn't it yes that's true yes and um because of the publicity that they gain sometimes these you know publicity acts whether it's a controversial visual or a controversial act that they did mm-hmm. they can sort of switch it around isn't it yeah yeah switch, uh, switch it around is in like you know people start to like the company because of how different they are right there's actually yes. a question by Hannah in the chat saying how do mm-hmm. visuals work in film and in what ways does it offer vis- offer how does it differ from visuals in advertising okay uh, okay, uh, there's a good point as well. I mean, you know, because sometimes the approach, although we are using the same visual, but if you want to work your visual in film, okay, you need to understand co- co- what's the difference between advertising and film. Okay, as for film, we actually spending our time looking at the visuals to understand the storyline more. So it will took you around two hours or even three hours if you watch Bollywood movies, you know. So people watch every single detail of the visual but when we talk about visual in advertising everything needs to be fast and you know firm directly to the message uh, especially when we talk about tv commercial you have only 30 seconds to deliver convey the message what you want to say with, with the, the good visuals that you have so you need to be careful the right visual what you want to get away because sometimes uh, TV commercial is is really expensive, as even in RTM. You know, when you want to put a TV as our commercial break, uh, it costs you a lot. So if you can't really uh, put a lot of um, creativity or you know cinematic aspect like in cinema, you cannot treat like that. It costs you a lot. So there could be a, a few of the things that you need to consider between the films and the advertising as well. Yes. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. There's another yep. question by Jay Shri asking, "What mm-hmm. would your advice be on visual copyrights?" Oh, okay. This is very interesting topic because I also was a victim of this copyright. Maybe some of you already know what happened to me last time when I designed my my short film poster, and unfortunately, my short film poster has been used by Hollywood films. It's been a debate during that time. So since you asked this question, so I think I would like to say a few things here. Um, when we talk about visual copyright, first, first and foremost, you need to understand whenever that you uh, get from internet and it always belongs to someone. So you need to be careful when you want to use all those images inside your advertising uh, material. So I think the best way to, uh, to, the, the best way to keep it originality of your idea is to shoot by yourself having a good camera as a professional people to shoot your product that will be the easiest way uh, to play around with the right unless if you think that you can't really get through all this uh, you know good equipment uh, professional people that could help you with that 
uh, you need to make sure that you need to contact all uh, the owner of the pictures or the clip or the videos whatsoever uh, to be get a consent you know uh, that we want to use this material for certain purpose usually these people are okay uh, they are agreed to 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 offer the material the visual material for you and uh, as long as you are not using for any you know Uh, profit purpose. So non-profit wise, I think it should be okay. But as a gesture of uh, appreciation, you should ask their consent first before you want to use campaign. You know, you need to be careful with that. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Um, I actually like to ask. Um, you you say that it's you know if we can't get copyrights or the proper copyrights for these um, footage that we use, you know, advertisements, visuals, whatever. Mm-hmm. You say to film um, film your own footages, right? Get it on, do yes. it on your own. But mm-hmm. at the same time, you know, not every company would have such great filming equipment. They don't yeah. have the experience as well. Mm-hmm. But, but do you think at the end of the day, the creativity and how they project those visuals would be better than the quality of their equipment? Uh, for me, it depends. You know, we are. I some somehow, some way, I can't agree what you're saying just now because sometimes people say, "Oh, when you have a good, uh, great uh, equipment or great budgets, uh, you know, tools or gadgets, it will boost your quality of your end product." Which is, I agree with that. But somehow, some way, uh, uh, ways. For example, if you don't have a good cameras sometimes if you just only have iphone for example iphone can also deliver great quality pictures so that's actually you can play around with that as long as you know how to use it properly uh, but again if you think that you want to use a copyright try to find out uh, a free copyright you know a royalty free copyright you may just usually can find out anywhere even in youtube they also have uh, offer to use that uh, okay you can use this material for free as long as it doesn't give you any profit uh, so i think that's how it works now yes yes but you know when we're talking about all these you know, copyright stuff you you're thinking of we are thinking of you know youtube content tv content or film mm-hmm. content but we also see visuals in social media postings as well whether it's just the the simple square ads that you see on instagram or on facebook But some of them, they still use uh, copyrighted material, and you know sometimes copyrighted material you would require to to credit them in the description, or or, yes. or at least somehow credit them in some way either in the video and description. But that's mm-hmm. a lot harder on social media, isn't it? So it's quite a challenge to to get copyrights for yes, yes, media. yes, definitely. Uh, I think this is the part where. Uh, especially for media student need to understand uh, some university do have offer what we call uh, uh, media law so when you learn about media law you will learn about how to use the copyright properly although you just only use social media but remember social media nowadays is very tricky uh, because some if you don't have knowledge people start asking oh I just simply grab this picture for free and then I post on my wall and it become viral. That's it. We don't know what is the, uh, what we call it, uh, disadvantage of that. If maybe the, the real owner suddenly seen your post and seen his picture or their, their artworks that you might get sued as well. So you need to be careful. As long as you put some credits, then I think it should be fine because that's how usually like photographers are totally on with You know, because that is their their masterpiece, their their artworks. You know, so their artwork is very important for for them to get their incomes and everything. And social media, yeah, uh, you need to be careful uh, when you have a certain material you want to use. You just put it on the credits. But I think uh, we need to educate uh, our public audience about that as well because now the issue is bit, uh, is getting worse because. When you have create an issue, people start to love to share, and even worse with the screenshots. Yeah, with this screenshot you can deny anything, whatever that you written down. That using the copyright pictures, 
even you, later on when you you found out that your post is getting become a you know controversy you, even when you remove the post but yet the screenshot is actually a proof of evidence that you actually breaking the law you know the copyright infringement so you need to be careful with that yes and um that's actually a very interesting thought because i'm i'm speaking um as in place for the I'm just only graduating mm -hmm. soon. Is that you know, yeah. with all of our assignments, it, when we we create something of our own, in at the same time we still look for images online, whether it's Google or any other uh, browser page, and we just put it in our assignment and sort of mm -hmm. say, oh, this is my creation. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of students forget that after after you you you're done with these assignments and after you're done the degree, mm -hmm. you have to create these images on your own, or you have to look for for images that that you can pay for for copyright um, purposes. So how how will you advise these people to transition between having this huge source of um, of images or footages or any mm -hmm. sort of film online that they can just use in their own work to the real world where they have to they have to start from scratch? Yeah, true indeed. Okay, when we talk about that. Uh for example, as a fresh graduate, of course, you might don't have any archive, your own collection yet. So, but it's good if you have already created on your own. So try to get uh, your own uh, drive where you can keep all the material. For myself, for example, I'm taking almost 10 to 12 years. So I have my own archive. So whenever you need to understand, maybe in future, you might need to reuse some of the material again. So I never delete any part of that, you know. So for example, you as a student that going to be a fresh graduate soon, uh, you need to remember that certain thing that you learn in, inside your class at the moment right now might be applied or reused again in the future. So I always encourage my student to keep your, all your works uh, to be even a raw raw footages or raw image that you never use at the end product but somehow some way you might have a feeling that it might be need to be used again in features just keep all my footage all film that i made before so because i know there will be some needed in the future that you can rely upon with rather than you grab someone stealing someone uh, pictures for free, uh, for granted, you know, so try to avoid with that. And then um, if you don't have any things like that, okay, I also can, I can, I can promote here for all of you. You can always use this material called Creative Commons. It, there's a website where, where all these platforms are free to be used. So this Creative Commons, you just type it, Creative Website. Uh, all the materials like graphics, images are free to use. So you can start from there. If you can't really get through all the pictures that you need, for example, like uh, if you, uh, you want to have aerial shots, for example, and you don't have much budget to, to rent or buy a drone, for example. So you usually can grab some of the footages for free in the Creative Commons website. Uh, like Binomi website also, they have a lot of galleries of uh, images so i think there's a lot more platform that you can use for free although there are certain parts you need to pay but a good start to begin with for your career oh thank you for sharing that so remember students keep the work that you create you'll never know if you need it later on that yeah although so although it's been rejected by you by your lecturer yeah <laughs> Yes, yes. Although it may be rejected the first time, but keep it. It is your hard work after all. Or you can always go for the second option that Saiful suggested, suggested called creativecommons.org. I looked for yes, that just for you guys. Right. All right. Uh, there's actually a question by Jia Hao. Are you familiar with um, meme culture, Saiful? Pardon? Are you, are you familiar with memes? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a yes, I guess. Okay, but, uh, just give me a few seconds. Okay. Yes. Okay, sorry for commercial break. <laughs> All yeah, right. Okay, let me. That's, that's uh, okay. Yeah, well, yeah. Hmm. I think um, I'm not sure that I'm really keen to that because maybe I'm slightly older compared to my brothers and that generation. But I noticed did they start to use this approach, you know, uh, to wash uh, memes, all the stuff. 
it's kind of fun because you have an app to create your own memes, all this uh like uh, stickers you know so it shows some creativity there but of course uh i notice people nowadays especially uh, youngster use this memes sometimes they use it for provoke you know and uh, makes a uh, fun you know a uh, humor elements there so sometimes you need to be careful if you want to use memes you know uh it might be uh, some get some people offended or so but of course there's a, there's a who how how it works nowadays so for me uh, as a not too not too young and not too old i can accept all these transitions i getting used with it and i i feel that it's very interesting you know because for example like few days back uh people start to mocking muhammad salah you know because the word salah there <laughs> so a lot of memes coming out from there because yeah the word salah is means wrong but they use Muhammad Salah face the Liverpool player as a part of the memes, you know, to to provoke or make it fun about certain things, yeah? Oh, that's a different uh, perspective of things. I see, thanks. Uh, Jack, is there a question that you'd like to ask Saifo? Well, um, uh, I don't have anything to ask unless, uh, you know, for example... No, I, I, I mean, would... because uh, we have another person that has their video on. So I was wondering if they wanted to ask a question. I'm not uh, sure. Okay. Jack, are you okay? Uh, if you're wondering how to turn off your video, when you scroll your mouse over the center of the screen, there should be a video camera uh, icon. So if you want to turn off your camera, you can turn up. You can click that button over there. Right. Okay. Sample, there's a question in the chat by Shreyas Goku asking, mm-hmm. what is your idea on violence and gore and how much to show even if the content is being made for adults? All right, good. Okay, violence. Um, it's a very uh, quite uh, interesting topic. Uh, yeah, of course, when we talk about film, sometimes you need to use violence element to show. But of, there are certain direction way how you can show violence because, for example, movies uh you can't uh some people cannot accept whatever you can see on screen so they use a different method for example that's why when them you have to understand how you can use what proper lightings uh camera angle etc like if you have a killing scenes for example uh some uh directors they have a different method or approach how you can showcase that scene instead of showing the real knife for example uh in front of the screen so they can use the shadows you know on the wall that you see is is happened during that that moment so that's actually a, a method you can deliver the same message convey the same message but a different method you don't have to show two where when you want to make sure your film can be public and what thing that i don't like most when you have that incident that you work so hard inside Film, that scene that you want to showcase to people but at the end when the cinema has been cut off due to restriction of our government you know the LPF Lembaga Penampisan Film or you know the in English um, what's the name in English uh, yeah uh, too much violence so they, they, they cut that scene out from the does it have to uh, does it involve censorship laws yes yeah, censorship yes yeah, censorship ah, law yes, yes. yeah so, yeah, that's actually that's actually law is very uh, important for us to understand so uh, because when we talk about copyright when we talk about censorship all different uh, laws you know so it is kind of a little bit gray area because for example too, too much uh, violence in this certain country it might be get or they will remove it. but in certain other country they actually can escape. so you need to understand uh, which region that you want to showcase your film yeah for example like in saudi arabia or most country there are certain things that you can't really show on screen so it doesn't matter how good your violence scenes to be uh to be showcased on screen but they will cut out uh, so there's a certain way that you can play around with just like example that i gave it to you just now by using a shadow or even like metaphors okay for example there's one film called apocalypse now where I want to chop off another guy so they where there's a, a ritual ceremony happen they chop off the real 
uh, buffalo on that scene. So it give a similar meaning to the incident is happened during the same. Be another way to play around with the violence. Yes, and it's quite interesting how censorship laws work in different countries, right? Because as example, um, in South Korea, I realized that when it comes to uh, broadcasting uh, shows mm -hmm. or broadcasting films, there's certain cens censorships on uh, drinking alcohol on TV or smoking on TV. That's mm -hmm. totally yeah. not allowed. Yes, yes. yes, yes. It's, it's, it's interesting to see how yeah, censorships work in different countries, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For example, like like uh, when we talk about the, the smoking and alcohol, yeah, it's a good point. Where uh, if you notice in uh, India, for example, we most hope uh, Bollywood movies when they have a scene where the characters smoking in that scene, so they actually use a uh, you know like a, something to cover the smoking part, and they put a remark: "Smoking is not good for." Them. So yes, yes. kind of reminder, yeah, that is another approach, you know, how to prevent from people start to follow in the bad habits. Yes, that, that is true. And I think that's the reason why they have that censorship, censorship law in um, South Korea. There's a question <laughs> by Cheryl in the chat asking, do you think memes discount the credibility of a company when they use it in their visuals? <laughs> okay. Um... It depends on your, uh, for me, it depends on your target audience. For example, if your products, it fits to young generation like you you guys, you know, uh, Mimi's uh, is actually works very well because people, uh, young people love Mimi's a lot and it's very engaging to them. But if you use for uh, adult or old people, you know, some of uh, this is like a cheap uh, kind of uh, advertising, you know. You can do it properly, but you use uh, this method. So they might feel like, oh, this brand is not good. It just, just cater for uh, certain people only. So, yeah, it depends on the perspective of the audience itself. Yes, and well, when it comes to memes, it's sort of like you have to understand the joke. And you can bring, mm. in, you can bring in the topic of using visual humor in, in in advertisements right and mm. the thing the joke is only funny if people get it right yes <laughs> yeah True. but using humor in visuals or in just advertising films is always a challenge to content creators isn't it yeah 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 definitely everything whatever the idea that you want to convey to people you must understand how the way they react to it so that's the thing that you as a student you need to think a different way of perspective, not just think about, okay, I think my idea is great, okay, I can use this, but sooner or later when you make it public or you, you make it viral and then suddenly people react differently, you know, so that's why I always encourage my students last time, uh, when you have great ideas, try to put it into a different point of perspective, you know, it will be, is it, it does it can be engaged, you know, kind of thing, so there are things that you need to consider as well. Yes. And um, what? Okay, you were saying you were saying at one point in your talk where um, it's important to find out what kind of emotions, what kind of mood you want the audience to feel when looking at your visuals, right? But yes, there are true. some, there are just some visuals that that um, create an emotion in the audience that's completely the opposite or just not related to what they sell. For so, for an example, an example of that is. Um, uh, Petronas, you know, makes these really emotional, heart-wrenching family advertisements or friends during <clears throat> these festivals, yeah? So yes, yeah. Why, why do you think they they create visuals like that, even though it's almost totally unrelated to their product? True, yeah. Um, for Petronas, um, yeah, of course, everybody knows Petronas is about oil, you know, oil and gas mm. industry. And when they do a lot of commercial, they are not actually highlight that much you know uh so there is more focus on uh nationality sentiments and moral stories so uh, that's actually a, a, a good side of branding for Petronas because when we talk about Petronas we always tell a story people keep waiting for every single uh festival commercial so so it's a good boost for Petronas image actually 
uh, although it's not really promoting their product, but people start recognizing, okay, Petronite is actually close to uh, Malaysian people. So that's how engage with them with the community. So it works for them. Okay, why do we go for Petronite? Because Petronite is very close. They're sharing all this kind of story. With the so I think there's a good approach by Petronite. Yes, I do agree. And and it's really quite interesting um, that even though they make these visuals that are totally unrelated to the, their product, they somehow make people anticipate yeah. these videos. Yes, and I think that's really important in the company and it's so uh, respectful. Yes. yes. And how how would you how would you advise these companies to create that bond with their, their consumers to to not only just be surprised or, or amazed at their content, but also to to feel connected to the to the uh, company. Yeah. Uh, well, um, that's a good point. When uh, you want to create a commercial, which is you want to, of course, first of all, when you want to do a commercial, of course, you want to promote your product. That's that's for sure. But when you use a different approach where you don't showcase much your, of your product, but the concept is more storytelling wise, uh, you know, about the community, uh, it works very well with the audience. For example, when you talk about, uh, uh, you know, a product like suitable for kids and then how actually the kids can relate with the product by having a good storyline although you don't have to showcase your, your own product at, at, at the end of the film. Uh, I think that's actually a way how you can engage because people like kids, for example, always remember all these, these good, good, simple, short and sweet uh, videos. Although they are not, uh, they are not showcase the product, but they remember the brand. Okay, for example, like McDonald's, or when they come up with a Happy Meal, of, uh, approach to the kids. So maybe they just showcase the toys, you know, they don't care about the foods. And then when they just showcase the toys, uh, the kids really uh, anticipate, they really want the toys. So for a parent, oh, okay, I have to buy Happy Meals then to get the toys. So that actually somehow, some way it works that way uh, for kids. Uh, for adults, could be the same thing. But of course, it uh, depends on their uh level of their what we call it experience so we need to translate or ingest more uh elements inside the film so that's a good way how to, you can rebrand your product yes and having these you know if we're, if we're talking about happy meals your they are given toys that are not only just these brand new uh like characters they are familiar characters they are mm-hmm. cartoon characters or movie characters that the kids are familiar with. And yeah. you know, we tend to think, you know, oh gosh, these kids are just attracted to the toys because it's something they know, they just want to play with the toys. But actually, <laughs> as, as us adults, we also look for something that's uh, familiar to us or, can I, or I can even say nostalgic to us. An example of that would be, you know, um, Disney movies coming back with new films after so long and Toy Story is a yeah. great example of that. And yeah, playing on nostalgia on their consumers is very important, don't you think? Yes, yes, because even like me, uh, I was a kid, I still attractive, uh, I feel attractive with females, you know. So I, I remember when I was a kid, I always ask my parents, okay, I want a happy meal because I want to get the toys, you know. So when I become uh, slightly older and we become parents, and so the formula and the, the feeling is always still, no matter when you are parents or when you are kids, you know. So when my kids want uh, happy meals, so I knew it. I, I it reminds me all those no, nostalgic moment. So that it really works for uh, McDonald's, you know, when you use happy meals, uh, sell their their product because at the end the parent eat the food. <laughs> yes, yes, that is quite funny. Right, yeah. so we're reaching the the end of the session soon. So Saiful, I actually like to ask you, can mm-hmm. you share some of your last words for people who are who are consuming all of these visuals, but at the same time later on they will be creating these visuals for their own consumers to 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 how do I say serve later on both yeah. Okay. 
All right. Uh, okay. Uh, I believe that most of you are going to be graduate soon. In in the, uh, you know, and you might need to be ready. You're mentally ready on getting all like you not know, be a good uh, having having a good career in a certain direction. You know, as a uh, advertising uh, agency or you know salesman or different uh, areas. Uh, but yes, uh, you need to understand how you can manipulate and use whatever uh, visual that you have and you can play around with that and creating a new story based on the visual that we have. So you need to be more creative, think outside of the box and try to manipulate with whatever visual. Sometimes this visual, it looks normal, but when you come up with a new uh, concept of idea, you can manipulate the images that you have and it creating something new. So that's how actually uh, it works in the industry because for those who creating new things, uh, new visuals, okay, you are become a trendsetter, not no longer a follower. So remember, because when we talk in this industry, it always uh, grow rapidly. So people start looking for new things coming up. So when you be a trendsetter, so it's easy for you to survive in the industry when you have a really strong visual that can long last in their mind. All right. Well, wow, thank you so much for this talk, Saifo, and what a wonderful advice. I hope everyone who is watching and everyone who is listening realize how important visuals are in this modern age of technology. All right. right. Since we've reached the end, I'd like to thank everyone again for joining us for this insightful talk. Uh, there will be a QR code that will be shown on the screen to, to give your feedback regarding this talk. Mohan, if you don't mind, can you take the stage? Mohan, are you there? Farah, how many semester to go to complete your studies? Or you already nearly at the end? I'm actually doing my internship now here ah, at the uh, faculty. Okay. Yeah, so I'm okay. nearly at the end. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, how's, how's faculty now? How's the and everybody? The faculty is great. I think we're doing a lot of great events, you know, inviting all these speaker, speakers in to, to give wonderful advice to both staff and students. It's It's been quite an experience. Mm -hmm. And I heard that Bollyhose has been postponed to us in a different dates, right? Yes, Bollyhose has been postponed, but it doesn't mean it's cancelled. So if <laughs> anyone's still interested for that, you can join next year if you want to show how you can host. Yes, yes. Actually, I'm I'm looking forward for Bollywood because for M Sport we are brand new and we are looking for more hosts actually. So I one day I can be joined that session and I'm looking for newcomers or you know new faces to join us soon. You know. Ooh, like, exactly. well, I will remember that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. I'll remember that. Cycle. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Um. Okay, Saifo, since Mohan is not here to give the QR code, I'd like to thank everyone again for joining. And, oh, there you are, Mohan. Okay. So, okay. yes, everyone, there, there is a QR code that you can scan to, sh to show your feedback or to share some feedback or opinions you have regarding this talk. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. And I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Thank you, Saifo, for joining us. All right. Thank you. See you, everyone. See you, everyone. Thank you.